This is the most inclusive course on cotton fiber to fabric quality and manufacturing. It reflects more than 30 years of experience by one of the top scientists and utmost experts in the field of cotton research and textiles. Please be aware that what you will see is only very small pieces of some parts of the course. This course is over 40 hours in total. As you will see, the course uses direct teaching by the speaker. Slideshows and real videos of all processing from harvesting and ginning to spinning and weaving. The course comes with all videos and hard copy of slideshows. An e-copy of one of Dr. El Mughazi books also come with the course. Again, these are only few clips. A complete course should be ordered via Amazon.com using the title, the author, and the code number of the course. The first part of this course is an introduction of critical concepts of fiber to yarn engineering and cost optimization. The second part deals with fiber characteristics such as fiber fineness, fiber length, fiber maturity, fiber strength, naps, and cotton stickiness. The third part deals with yarn characteristics such as yarn count, twist, strength, irregularity, and imperfections. All characteristics are discussed in the context of measurements and impacts on fabric quality. The fourth part deals with fiber processing starting with harvesting and ginning and going into cotton mixing and blending. All stages of spinning preparation including opening and cleaning, carding, drawing, combing, and moving are covered in great details. Different types of spinning such as ring spinning, compact spinning, rotor open and spinning and friction spinning. The course will also cover effects of yarn and fiber characteristics on textile fabrics. Chapter 1 An overview of fiber to yarn engineering. Perhaps the best way to start this overview is to uh, discuss the principle of the fiber to yarn conversion system. And this is uh, a factor or an issue that all spinners are familiar with. But uh, uh, for some of you who are not familiar uh, with the system, the system is very simple in principle. What we have here is a system in which the input material is fibers and the output material is yarn. Now a yarn may be considered as a final product if we are dealing with a spinner or an intermediate product uh, but in any case it will be used in further processing, uh, weaving and knitting and the other applications. Uh, between the fiber and the yarn the system consists of two basic processes. The first process is the uh, spinning preparation process and in the whole objective of this process is to produce a fiber strand. Uh, we need to understand that our input material is fibers and the form of these fibers uh, is a massive bulk of fibers. So we're dealing with a massive bulk as an input material as represented in the cotton bale or the polyester bale. So the whole idea of a spinning preparation is to actually convert the massive bulk of fibers to a linear strand that resembles the, the yarn that we are trying to produce. And this takes place through a number of uh, uh, manipulation processes where the massive bulk is manipulated through a number of operations as we will discuss very shortly and the finally it's converted to a fiber strand or a linear fiber strand. This fiber strand is then fed to the spinning process or the yarn formation system. Uh, if we want to take a closer look at the system and again in principle we will find that the starting point in any fiber to yarn conversion system is the bale of fibers as you see here and uh, a typical uh, bale uh, 
mix or lay down may consist of 20 all the way to 60 i've seen 80 and 90 bales in the lay down so we we deal with a very large number of bales and each bale has fibers of different characteristics or different fiber attributes so the idea first is to uh, get a cotton mix consisting of many bales and then mix the fibers from different bales together to produce a homogeneous mix or a homogeneous fiber mix. So basically we detach or take tufts that may range in weight from about 40 grams all the way to 80 grams uh, and we mix these tufts together in a mixing uh, process as you see here. So in the mixing process we have tufts obtained from the different bales in the lay down or the bale lay down or the cotton mix and the idea here is to mix these different tufts together to initiate a homogeneous mix and when i say initiation i mean by that there are further blending and mixing processes down the chain of the uh, spinning preparation so as we mix these fibers together we produce an average fiber characteristics or what we call it the the input fiber profile uh, representing an average of all the bales that we've used in the mix now after that as you see here the the tuft size is large and the the goal in order to reduce this large tuft size down to a linear fiber strand will be to open the fibers that's to divide and redivide the fiber tufts down to smaller uh, uh, size and the key issue here is to achieve this opening process in a very gradual fashion because we certainly do not want to damage the fibers so the next process after mixing will be the opening process now during opening we also clean the fibers uh, simply any opening process in which we divide and redivide the fibers will make all the trash particles and the foreign matter in the fibers uh, more exposed uh, we can then dust them off or through some mechanical penetration we can remove those trash particles from the fibers so after mixing we have opening and cleaning processes So, so far we've taken uh, tufts from different bales, we mix these tufts, and then uh, the, the fiber tufts goes through a progressive opening and the cleaning operations. Uh, two points that you need to keep in mind here. Number one, we have to apply gradual opening on the fiber tufts to avoid damaging the fibers. So the idea here is progressively uh, and gently uh, we, we open the fibers. When it comes to cleaning, we would like to have, uh, in the initial cleaning process, remove the large trash particles. Uh, the reason for that is we certainly do not want the large trash particles in the cotton to go any further down the the opening and the cleaning line because if this happened the those trash uh, particles as we open the fibers they will also be damaged broken into smaller or fine trash particles which will be extremely difficult to remove so the idea here is gradual opening and cleaning the opening has to be gradual so that a gentle action can be applied on the fibers to avoid fiber damage and the cleaning has to be coarse in the beginning to remove the heavy trash and as we go for further down the chain of processing we can then apply a finer opening and the cleaning uh, so that we can finish the job of opening and the cleaning the three processes we just mentioned uh, the blending the opening and the cleaning are typically performed simultaneously uh, anytime you try to open uh, that's divide or redivide uh, the the fiber tufts uh, the dust the dust and trash become exposed so simultaneously you do some form of cleaning and as the tuft size becomes smaller then uh, the 
possibility of better blending and enhancing the blending between the different tufts increases and as a result of that blending uh, is becoming much uh, uh, more enhanced so opening cleaning uh, uh, blending are three functions of the initial process the opening and the cleaning line that are typically performed simultaneously that is despite the fact that we have some machines that are specialized in opening others that are specialized in in cleaning and obviously we have uh, mixing machines anytime we open the fibers we clean the fibers and we also blend the fiber tufts now the opening process continues until we reduce the tuft size dramatically down to what we call a card whip and carding, as we will learn later on, is a fine opening and the cleaning process. This is the last machine in the opening and the cleaning line. So your chance of uh, reducing the size of the tufts end at this point here. And ideally speaking, the card web uh, should be very thin. In fact, theoretically speaking, it should be as, as thin as a single fiber uh, thickness. So this is the final opening. Once we make the, the fiber web, we condense it into a linear strand the, or the fiber strand, which goes through a, a series of drafting processes in which the size of the fiber strand is further reduced and fibers are straightened and uh, uh, oriented along the fiber strand. So basically what we see in line of spinning preparation is blending opening cleaning and attenuation of the fiber strand to form a linear fiber strand that resembles the yarn the difference between this fiber strand and the yarn is that number one that fiber strand is not very strong number two it has a very large number of fibers a typical fiber strand uh, coming from the drawing process or the carding process may have about 30 uh, to 40 or 50,000 fibers per cross section, which is a long way from where we started here. Because when we started here, we have bales of cotton, a massive bulk of fibers. Uh, each bale may have from 50 to 70 billion fibers. And you can imagine multiplying this number by the number of bales in the mix. And uh, in addition to that, uh, those fibers are compressed so we're talking about a massive bulk at very high density and what the spinning preparation uh, does through opening and the cleaning is that it reduces the size down to only 30 to 40,000 fibers per cross section but a typical yarn may have uh, a number of fibers per cross section from uh, 40 uh, in case of uh, very fine yarn all the way to seven eight hundred fibers in coarse yarns so we still have a long way when it comes to drafting or attenuation before we can actually make a yarn now the yarn is made in a spinning process or a yarn forming system now there is a common principle that can be applied for all the spinning system that we have today this common principle is based on three basic mechanisms or three basic operations the first operation is the drafting operation. In this operation, we actually reduce the size of the fiber strand down to the desirable size or yarn uh, size. And what we see here is a major reduction from, uh, as I said early on, 30 to 40 or 50,000 fibers per cross section down to the number of fibers per cross section, which can only range from uh, 40 in a very fine yarn to about seven eight hundred in the very coarse yard so we can see now that we have uh, another uh, drafting process inherent to the spinning system any spinning system has a built-in drafting process and we will discuss that as we talk about different spinning systems later on but this should be the initial process in any spinning system drafting the second process is consolidation after we draft the fibers, after we reduce the size of the fiber strand down to the size of the yarn, we need to add some strength or cohesion 
to the fiber strand, to the yarn. And this can be achieved using different mechanisms that we will discuss later on. But the most common mechanism is fiber uh, twisting. We twist the fibers uh, together to form the yarn and to add the strength necessary uh, for the yarn to withstand further processing. Now, twisting is a very unique mechanism that uh, many engineers outside the textile engineering field uh, are not fully aware of. Twisting is just about the only binding mechanism by which you can bind the different elements of the structure. Meanwhile, you can maintain the flexibility. Because one may wonder, why don't we just add an adhesive uh, material or, or cement or glue to the fibers and we can then put them together in the yard? The reason that we use twisting and wrapping and other uh, mechanisms is that we need to add the strength to the fiber strand. Meanwhile, we need to maintain or preserve the, the flexibility that was originally in the fiber. We need to convert that flexibility to the yard. So the yarn will become flexible and the fabric produced from the yarn will also become flexible. So drafting to reduce the size down to the desirable size of the yarn and then consolidation to put the fibers together and to add the necessary strengths to the yarn. And then finally the yarn uh, backage forming or the winding process. So in any spinning system you have to have three mechanisms. First of all, we have to have the drafting mechanism by which we reduce the size of the desired uh, of the yarn uh, or the fiber strand down to the desired yarn count. Second, we have to have a consolidation mechanism and finally we have to have some way to form a package through a winding process.